Hello and welcome to the fourth part of CPU scheduling algorithms and we are going to discuss round robin in this one. So I will copy one of these and I have made a call to round robin function using nab. So let's just make a new function for round robin. And we need to take time quantum as an integer input from the user. So as you guys have studied in SPOS, time quantum is the amount of time any process is given for it to execute on the CPU. And if it is not completed with the execution, uh, it stops where uh, wherever it is and the remaining burst time is added to the waiting queue and yeah the wait uh, one one process comes in from the waiting queue and time quantum is subtracted from that till the process completes its execution so we'll do that enter the time quantum and Firstly, yes, in round robin 2, we have to sort using arrival times. That is a must. And now, uh, our logic will be over here. So, over here, what we have to do, we will um, go on subtracting. Uh, we will go on subtracting the time quantum from each and every process and we'll also have to keep a track of the waiting queue so let's name it as wait we'll just put in the index numbers of the processes that are waiting so that we can uh, take them to their completion so Let's have a loop. Okay, we will modify this loop only. We were directly appending the time over here, right? What we'll do is we'll check if our B of I is greater than time quantum if it is greater than time quantum or let's say greater than equal to time quantum we will append uh, time quantum in this case to it and we will subtract we will subtract time quantum from b of i and then we will Yeah, we'll also have to give an else part else if it is less than then we will just do by uh, t dot append plus p of i and yeah p of i becomes zero in this case because it's like it has been it has completed execution so its burst time will be zero now and this is what we have to do and we have to repeat this process till all burst times are zero sorry till all burst times are not zero okay so let's let's keep a flag while flag equal to equal to zero so i'll have a flag variable which initially is zero and yeah i'll have a condition if my b of i is not equal is equal to equal to zero or maybe let's say not um, yeah if it is equal um, let's do it this way
if it is not equal to 0 then we will keep the flag as it is ok flag is equal to 0 else flag is 1 yes so by the end of this if all our b's are 0 then the flag will be 1 and we will get out of this loop and yeah while, while doing this we also have to up, uh, we've appended the time to t we also have to append the process name to t ok so when we do this we will also append um, it was stored in q right so q dot append the process name n of i same thing in the else part and let's see if this works so yeah we will do it for the same thing where is my file yeah it's over here time quantum let's give a time quantum of 2 so so how should the above example look <coughs> firstly initially p4 begins and it has a time quant it has a burst time of 2 so no issues then we have p3 in execution it it has a, a burst time of 5 but it will go on till uh, 4 because only 2 amount of time uh, it is available for p3 and then it will be preempted then comes in p1 it will also execute for 2 amounts of time and it will join the queue after p3 then p2 <coughs> again <coughs> 2 amount of time and yeah it is also preempted and again we have p p3 for another 2 amounts of time then p1 for another 2 amounts of time and then p1 is done but p3 is added to the queue and then we have p2 for 1 amount of time and p3 for 1 amount of time that's what we should get let's see oh <laughs> guess we have a an infinite loop over here we need a stopping condition as well why is this not working though let's print flag each time let's see what happens mm, it is zero always it is not even becoming one once that's quite strange but we have coded it so we should debug it let's see uh, if p of i is not equal to 0 then flag is 0 else flag becomes 1 mm, we will we'll print b of i each time let's see p of i get rid of the flag okay I am not decrementing it <laughs> I should have decremented it let's see now okay what should I think the chart is quite big That's not our ideal output. There is some kind of error in this, but we'll try to solve it. But yes, P4 is beginning. Uh, uh, 
at 0 and then stopping at 2 our times are going on well we need to see where we append it okay so I'll, I'll remove this and then try doing it 2 let's see p4 p3 should have come in after that why so Two, 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 two. There's, there's an issue over here. When it is, when it is zero, if burst time is zero, we need not get into this. So if our burst time is not equal to zero, then we'll get into this. P1 for 2, P3 for 2, P2 for 2, then P1 for 2 and P1 finishes, then P3 for 2, P3 has not yet finished and P2 for 1, that's correct but one time of P3 is remaining because P3 was 5. So we'll have to tweak this a bit. And yes, we are printing B of I too. Let's see what we get. B of I and we'll also print N of I. So we can identify our process. So uh, P3's burst time is 1. So why is my flag stopping then? For checking this condition, we'll employ another loop because both of them see, we'll do this and if any of them is not zero, we'll just break out simply. We don't need to loop over the entire range. Now let's see. Am I getting P P314? Yes, so it is working correctly. So our priority, sorry, round robin scheduling is done. And in the next video, we'll be seeing shortest job first, SJF, that to no, uh, preemptive way. So in that case, we'll have to preempt, that is take the CPU from the currently executing process if any high priority process comes in. So we'll see that in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.